、うん、ミヒコ・イマムラ。プロフェッサー・フミヒコ・イマムラ、スタディアトホークユニバーシティ・イン・ジャパン・イン・1989。Promoted to the full professor、uh, in 2000 and now is a director of the International Research Institute of Disaster Science, so called IRIDES, at the Tohoku University since April 2014. And, and he is a professor of tsunami engineering and expert on tsunami modeling for warning, mitigation planning, <laughs> and awareness. And he was conducted. He conducted several field surveys as a leader for earthquakes and tsunami damage investigations since the 1992 in Nicaragua and Indonesia. And he is the Secretary International、uh, Time Project Tsunami uh, uh, Inundation、uh, Modeling Exchange, supported by IOC and、uh, IUGG and Tsunami Commission. He is a member of Science Council of Japan, science member of the、uh, Central Disaster Management Council in Japan, and was the president of the Japan Society for Natural Disaster Science in 2008 to 2011. After the 2011 Tohoku earthquake, he、uh, became the member of study group of the Reconstruction Design Council in response to.、Uh, This earthquake at the cabinet office. And a committee, also, he's a member of committee for technical investigation in countermeasures for the earthquake and tsunami of Central Disaster Management Council. So、uh, I'm very excited to have him and please welcome Professor Imamura.、Uh, thank you very much for my introduction, Professor Abe. Uh, we are very pleased to have invited the, this lecture and provide the, some talk and discuss with, with you. So,、uh, let me start, it, start the,、uh, my talk by using the、uh, PowerPoint.、Uh, can you see the、uh, PowerPoint? Thank you. So,、uh, good evening in the US, morning in Japan, and、uh, good night in the,、uh, Scotland. <laughs> so, my talk, uh, uh, which、uh, title is the Overview of the 2011 Great East Japan as a Tsunami.、Uh, as the professor introduced me,、uh, I'm the, the director of the EDDES and the professor of the Tsunami Engineering. So, 2011, we can say the triple disasters. Earthquake, tsunami, and accident of the nuclear. So, so、uh, before that,、uh, talking about 2011,、uh, just、uh, I briefly introduce the kind of the increasing natural disasters, especially the earthquake and tsunami、uh, in the、uh, Pacific Ocean and other. Including a 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami caused more than 250,000 people、uh, uh, deaths. And 2011, it is a triple、uh, disaster. So, this is the map、uh, showing the、uh, history of the earthquake for 100 years,、uh, followed by the tsunami. So, you can see the map. Uh, of the、uh, world. So, this is the、uh, Pacific Ocean, and you can see the distribution of the、uh, earthquake. So, among them,、uh, you can see the history of the giant、uh, earthquake in the beginning of the 20th century, the Ecuador or Colombia.、Uh, we have the very large earthquake、uh, in 1906. So, a little bit decreasing, but、uh, we have the more or less the、uh, 8.5 earthquake. But、uh, in the、uh, middle of the 20th century, after the 52 Kamuchaka here,、uh, we have the 1960 Chile. It is the biggest earthquake and to generate a tsunami, and it propagates to Hawaii and Japan and the other country in the Pacific. It caused huge damages. After that, the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center was started and provided the information of the earthquake tsunami, and followed by the 24 Alaska. So we can say very high in,、uh, activity of the giant earthquake. But after that, it is decreasing、uh, rapidly. 
So it is kind of silent. But in the beginning of uh, 20th century, uh, 21st century, uh, 2004, smart solar and uh, earthquake to generate uh, Indian Ocean tsunami and followed by the 2011 uh, Japan. So uh, this is the uh, just briefly idea uh, of the tsunami, Pacific uh, Oceanic uh, tsunami. So you can see the uh, the earth, and uh, here uh, we have the large earthquake magnitude 9.1 uh, in the uh, Indonesia and Andaman. So you can see the propagation pattern. Uh, we have the one tsunami uh, approaching to the uh, Phuket area, Thai and Malaysia. And this is a little bit shallow. So tsunami are a bit late. And, but the other side in the deep ocean propagate very rapidly reach to the Sri Lanka and India. So now almost two hours passed. So tsunami proceeded to propagate very widely. Uh, and here we have the Maldives uh, countries. This is the uh, many, many uh, islands and the low places. So half of the island affected by the tsunami and caused big damage, including the to tourism. And proceed to again, a tsunami reached to the uh, uh, east coast of the Africa. So you can see the idea of the uh, tsunami uh, like this. So after the uh, seven uh, years uh, of the uh, Sumatra, we have the uh, 2011 earthquake offshore the Sendai, Tohoku area. So this is one of the earthquake tsunami prone area. Uh, from the old history, uh, we have the many, many earthquakes and the tsunami and have the damages. But the 2011 was uh, worst. So magnitude was estimated almost nine. It is the uh, still biggest in Japan and the fourth largest in the world. And many uh, aftershock continue. But this year, already 10 years passed, but still we have the aftershock. In the February, Fukushima, March, Miyagi, and May, a fraud, a magnitude more or less 7.0. So, still, the effect of the uh, large earthquake continue uh, more than 10 years. And two days ago, uh, we have the uh, small earthquake in Tokyo, but they affected many, many facilities and people. So, still, uh, we are in the risk. Uh, of the earthquake. So at the time, the uh, tsunami was generated and the Japan Meteorological Agency, Japanese government uh, can make a tsunami warning uh, within the three minutes. It is very fast, but uh, later I'll explain the accuracy is not good, very underestimated. And the tsunami reached to uh, the coastal area of the Tohoku uh, 20 or 30 minutes. So there are some uh, time for the people to evacuate. But the inf information, oh, uh, sorry, uh, just a moment. Uh, so uh, before talking about the tsunami warning, so you can see the tsunami uh, generation and propagation. As I mentioned, almost 20 or 30 minutes tsunami reach to the Sandik coast. It is very complex, complicated shoreline and the tsunami easily amplified. And Fukushima nuclear plant is located here. Uh, more than the 10 meter tsunami uh, reach to Fukushima and Sendai here. So uh, almost the one hour and 20 minutes passed and the tsunami inundated and some part of the tsunami coming back uh, to the ocean side. And this is called deflected wave and propagate to the other area and the beach and deflected again and propagate to the other. So it is a kind of oscillation and it continue for two days. So tsunami warning was uh, not canceled at the time. So this is many, uh, one of the many photos taken by the uh, people, survived people and the government. Uh, so here in Sendai, uh, you can see the front of the uh, tsunami. 
Uh, and here, this is the side view of the tsunami due to the uh, coastal area with the forest. It was the, uh, I can say, uh, planted uh, more than 400 years ago. At that time, we have the similar earthquake tsunami and affected the uh, samurai uh, date. Uh, they reconstructed this area and people not uh, allowed to live and planting the tree at that time. And we keep this barrier uh, for the future. But the uh, 2011 tsunami was so large, 80% of the forests are destroyed. So uh, we can know, uh, again, uh, we discuss the how we can uh, save, uh, protect this area and save the uh, lives. So anyway, uh, this is another uh, uh, computer graphic. Uh, this side is the ocean, uh, tsunami coming this way. Uh, so you can see here, and this is a highway. Highway uh, worked as a dike uh, to protect the tsunami on the land. So this is not the purpose for the tsunami mitigation at the time, but uh, we encourage uh, such kind of infrastructure uh, had a very important role to mitigate tsunami as well as the uh, some flood and inundation caused by the uh, some storm surge are added. So this is, is I think, an example of the multi-layer protection, not only the dike along the coast, but we can utilize uh, such a infrastructure. I think. So at the time of the 2011, people can go up to the highway, uh, six meter above the sea level. So more than 300 people can go up at the time. It is a very pro plain area. So maybe one or two meter above the sea level. So no places for the tsunami at the time uh, without the one elementary school of, of the uh, Alhama. So, and you can see the protection uh, work uh, of the highway uh, for the tsunami. And after that, this area, uh, seaside, very destructive, but the backside, behind the highway, almost very small effect. So again, I would like to uh, uh, explain the, some process or the information to save our life. So tsunami warning was started more than 60 years ago in Japan. So this is the non-structure measure uh, to save our life, uh, to provide information. After the earthquake uh, within two or three minutes, uh, very uh, quickly uh, detecting the earthquake magnitude and location. Uh, we have the database of the tsunami uh, with the many scenario. So whenever earthquake, we can get such a, a information, we can uh, provide some information of the arrival time or height of the tsunami uh, by using this database. So after the three minutes uh, <clears throat> of the main shock, uh, almost two uh, 14 uh, uh, hours, uh, uh, 49 minutes, uh, so the three minutes after the uh, shock, the magnitude was 7.9. It is very underestimated because the earthquake itself very large and continue the release of the energy for three minutes and more. So it is the uh, way of the JMA to uh, ask quick magnitude is just to uh, record the first motion of the uh, earthquake and to estimate the magnitude for rapid uh, information. So this, that's why uh, we have the underestimate like this. So by using this information of the magnitude, tsunami database provides us six meter of the Miyagi and six me uh, three meter in Iwate and Fukushima. So some of the area in Tohoku uh, were protected by the seawall more than five meter or 10 meter. So information of this three meter of the tsunami height 
tell the people. So tsunami coming, but uh, not so large, less than the height of the seawall. So many people stop uh, to the evacuate. So this is the very uh, serious issue. So information is very good and it's very uh, important, but uh, the uh, low accuracy uh, cause more damage. But uh, after that, we have the uh, real-time observation of the tsunami uh, to detect direct tsunami, uh, not, uh, don't use the earthquake information. So it's uh, showing the first tsunami uh, of the height already six meter offshore. The tsunami offshore uh, amplified and increasing two or three uh, times more. So it, it means maybe uh, more than 18 meter or 20 meter of the tsunami height along the coast. So JMA officer changed the tsunami warning uh, by using real time information uh, from six meter to 10 meter or three to six meter. So it is updated. So it, it's good, but uh, it is too late for the people to evacuate. So it is called the kind of trade off. So in the beginning, the lower accuracy, but uh, it's very quick information. So time by time, we can have the many information, a measurement and some simulation, but it's too late. So we need the, uh, how we can utilize such disaster information time by time. So this is a still a big issue. But to, to improve the, such situation, uh, we install the very dense uh, tsunami and earthquake measurement of shores. So this is the fire cable connected by uh, the sensor, uh, with the sensor, more than 150 sensors. So whenever and uh, any places earthquake tsunami occurred, we can uh, check, we can detect the both. So it is very good rapid information and very accurate because that this is the real time uh, monitoring. So after the 2011, Japanese government installed. But this is very special. So the, uh, some places uh, to install such big number of the uh, sensor are very limited. Not uh, all, all places, even in Japan. So now by using the AI, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, even the small number, uh, small uh, or limited information of the tsunami as an input, but uh, before the uh, tsunami and ask it happen, uh, we uh, learned uh, many, many cases by AI and rapidly provide uh, some result of the tsunami profile, some area. So, so th this is the case of the Tokai in the middle of the Japan and uh, nearby the Tokyo. Uh, we have the, another possibility of the earthquake tsunami and even one uh, station information can provide us the good uh, information by uh, AI. So this is one, uh, one of the solution to uh, solve the problem. And the last one in the triple disaster uh, is the nuclear uh, plant failure and accident. So the IAEA uh, estimated the level seven, it is the worst level. So this still we have the uh, decommissioning works uh, continues. And some area in uh, Fukushima uh, pro, uh, allow the people uh, to live again, but to still many, many problems. So after the earthquake, uh, let me explain some response when I'm talking about university and establish the EDDS. So the, we have the many, many damages, including that uh, Tohoku area and uh, university itself. So we started eight projects. One is the EDDS uh, for the research purposes. Second one, the community health. It is uh, still a big problem. And the third one is the environmental energy issues. And fourth is the information technology uh, and marine science or nuclear uh, decommissioning and industrial restoration support like this. 
and we have more than 100 uh, various volunteer uh, voluntary uh, projects in the university. So first of the eight projects is EDDES, and it is a very interdisciplinary research institute uh, with the natural disasters, uh, uh, natural sciences and engineers and the human social sciences and the medical uh, doctors. So we have the seven uh, division at that time. So it is kind of a cycle of the ma uh, disaster management. So once the disaster happens, uh, but before we have the, some kind of evaluation or a risk uh, map, including a risk map. So it is very related with the natural sciences. So we, we can research on the history of the earthquake and tsunami and the mechanism, and the result can be uh, integrated uh, on the or accumulated on the map. So when the earthquake happen, uh, we need information uh, and some support to uh, recover it. And we have the serious problem in the uh, society, uh, evacuation problem or the uh, construction problem. So we have the team to support them. And to save our life, uh, we need a rescue team uh, just after. It. And we have now a problem of the mental, mental problem. Uh, cannot uh, cover the uh, physically and mentally uh, even the 10 years past. And we have the digital archive to compile the available uh, photos and some tweeters uh, and other. So this is our mission. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we have the disaster cycle or management. So before the after disaster, uh, we have some kind of uh, issue uh, in the each phases. So we improve the, this uh, disaster cycle uh, to prepare uh, for the uh, future. So we have the many, many uh, researcher uh, with the student uh, to uh, work together. So this is the idea of the disaster risk reduction and build back better. So uh, on the resilience curve. So this is the uh, also uh, idea of the disaster management cycle. So some just happened, uh, we have the big damage and activities become low and decrease, but we need a, a effective response and we need a reconstruction plan uh, better than before. So even we have maybe some uh, disaster we have uh, maybe experienced in the future, but uh, after the uh, disaster, uh, if we have the build back better, uh, we have the uh, positive uh, spiral. So to uh, support sustainable deployment. But actually in the many, many cases uh, after the disaster, uh, response might be late and the reconstruction plan is not well, so not reach to the uh, previous level of the safety or uh, living uh, circumstances. So we have negative spiral. So we need to change from the negative to uh, positive. So uh, last one uh, in my talk, uh, kind of the movement of the world society, especially in the nation, uh, we have the many, many issues for 2030s. So there are three major agenda, including the Sendai framework for disaster reduction uh, and the SDGs and Paris Data Agreement. Uh, this is the map uh, of the series of the UN conference in uh, 2015 at that time. So we have the three layers. So this is medium development goal, uh, uh, maybe connected to the SDGs, SDGs, and in the middle, disaster risk reduction, and the bottom, climate change, uh, big uh, conferences. So 2015, we have the conference at the Sendai in the March uh, to discuss new strategy. So Sendai framework for DRR was accepted. 
And uh, next September uh, in New York, uh, the big discussion for the development goal, and uh, they uh, uh, adopted the SDGs. And December, the Paris, at the Paris, big, uh, also discussion for the climate change. So we, now we have the three majors. So we need a uh, kind of the collaboration uh, to achieve the goal for each. So this is a brief idea of the Sendai framework and the four priority action and the seven go uh, global target. And this is SDGs, as you know, 17 goal and uh, more than 160 indicator like this. So just to briefly, uh, let me explain the first priority and fourth priority for the Sendai for DRR. The first one is to understand uh, disaster risk. This is very important and starting. So uh, disaster risk management should be based on the understanding of the uh, disaster risk in the each area. So we need the some kind of map and the assessment and some uh, some uh, variation of the exposure and the hazard characteristic. So this is the start point and uh, get the kind of achievement among the uh, people uh, to starting the some uh, action for the other. And the fourth is also very important, including the build back better in the recovery, rehabilitation, and the rec reconstruction plan. So this is the idea of the Sendai here. Uh, so in my talk, I uh, show the example of the rule of the uh, highway uh, to protect the tsunami. Uh, at the time, the green belt uh, of the uh, pine uh, did not work well uh, because the uh, roots of the pine tree are very shallow uh, because they're planting on the very uh, low areas. So we put the soil and the uh, uh, increasing the level and the roots uh, of the pine tree uh, longer and be strong now uh, against the future uh, tsunami. And we have the uh, sea wall. Actually, we have big discussion for the environment and some escape, uh, 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 landscape. Uh, but uh, we need the, not only tsunami, but the storm surge due to the climate change and typhoon. And this year, the new typhoon uh, attack to the Sendai directly. It is the first record uh, in Japan. So 7.2 meter uh, as low as possible, uh, we constructed, uh, but we have the multi-layer protection uh, to reduce the tsunami and the flood, uh, flood uh, inside, and we have the shelter like this. So this is the idea of the build back better. We have the many, many multi-layer green belt, high, new highway, and uh, this is the existing highway, and the residential area moved to the backside of the highway. And we put the steps uh, to the highway easily, even the elder people. And this area can use for the industry purpose, not a living purpose. So this is, uh, I hope, uh, one of good example uh, or the big part better uh, to introduce uh, the other countries. So anyway, uh, we cannot respond more than the prepared. So before 2011, we have many experiences of the earthquake tsunami, and we uh, did the many evacuation and uh, the earthquake uh, proof uh, building and some hazard map, but not enough for the large cases. But anyway, the appropriate just information is very important and save their life. But uh, we have many, many uh, uh, risks, uh, not only natural di uh, disaster, but uh, COVID-19 and all that. And uh, we need the build back, uh, uh, build the legend society for the many, many uh, risks. But uh, it is a big discussion for us how we can build such a uh, society uh, according to the some uh, disaster management cycle. So yeah, this is my talk <laughs> in the, uh, at the first uh, lecture uh, today. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention.
Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Imamura. And uh, we don't have much time to take uh, any questions, but if, there, if there's any question, maybe we can take one. If it's not, we're gonna continue. Guys, is there any question you'd like to ask Professor Imamura at this po point? Okay, then let me introduce Professor Osamu Murao. Dr. Osamu Murao is a professor at the International Research Institute of Disaster Science at Tokyo University, which was established in, in order to uh, disseminate the learning from uh, 2011 East Japan earthquake and tsunami disaster. And uh, he is a founder of the International Strategy for Disaster Mitigation Laboratory, ISDM. Together with a collaborating organization from many countries and with broad areas of specialization, IDES conducts world leading research on natural disaster science and disaster mitigation. In order to be in charge of ISDM uh, in the Regional and Urban Reconstruction Research Division, Dr. Murao was transferred to IRIDES from the Faculty of Engineering Information Systems at the University of Tsukuba in April 2013. His current research focuses on the post-disaster recovery process and urban design and the relationship between physical environment and disaster. To date, with a research grant by Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology of Japan, and other organizations, he has investigated the post-disaster recovery process for damaged area in Taiwan, Turkey, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Indonesia, Peru, Philippines, and World Trade Center in, in uh, New York, as well as the 2011 Great East Japan earthquake. Particularly, he kept tracking on the recovery process of Chichi Township since the 1999 Chichi earthquake in Taiwan as a visiting researcher of National Taiwan University in 2005. Dr. Murao has been involved in some research projects about post-disaster urban recovery and disaster risk reduction in the world. So please welcome Professor Murao. Thank you. Thank you very much. It is a great honor for me to have this opportunity to, pre to present to the UCLA studio following last year. Um, can you see this? Okay, uh, today I talk about architecture and urban design for disaster risk reduction, especially focusing on fire. I prepared two contents. The first architecture and urban design in disaster life cycle and the history of great fire and urban development in Japan. The third one is uh, maybe I cannot talk today. That first architecture and urban design in disaster life cycle, a uh, basic idea of the relationship between the disaster management and the design. Uh, this is a concept of disaster life cycle. Uh, this is uh, the same as uh, Professor Imamura's talk, but uh, disaster happens. And uh, after disaster, we need response phase. Then we move into the recovery or reconstruction phase. Then we get the ordinary life then we need to think of a future disaster to reduce disaster risk. Then there are two types of strategies. At first, mitigation and preparedness. Uh, here, uh, this guy is in the risky area, vulnerable situation. And uh, if the falling rock uh, hit him, it is the disaster. Then at first they need mitigation strategy. Mitigation is activities aimed at eliminating or reducing the occurrence of a disaster and reducing 
effects of unavoidable disasters. Uh, this is a definition by FEMA. And there are two types of uh, mitigation. At first, structural mitigation. That you can see this picture. Then, then anyway, by structure or one physical environment, uh, we need to reduce the risk. Then this is one example a promotion of earthquake resistant measures in the University of Tsukuba. Another example is this one. Uh, this is a stone wall in Okinawa prefecture to prevent strong wind from the ocean. Uh, this is a typical mitigation strategy. Uh, this picture is a levee called Great Wall in Taro, Iwate Prefecture. Uh, total length uh, was more than two kilometers and the height was 10 meters from Tokyo Pile. Then it was uh, improved after the 2011 tsunami. This is a structure mitigation. Another mitigation type is land use mitigation. This is to put buffer zone from the risky areas. Uh, the, for example, this is damage in Hilo in Hawaii Island. They was hit by 1946 Aleutian Islands earthquake tsunami. And also in to, uh, in 1960, Chilean tsunami hit the area. After the tsunamis, the government uh, planned this downtown development, development plan. Uh, this is to put the buffer zone. Uh, this is the damaged, damaged area inside the red line. It was used for the residential area, but uh, most of them were washed away. Then this area was replaced by the large waterfront park to prevent future tsunami. Uh, this is the current situation of the ocean park in Hilo. And uh, this is also the picture of the park. The small picture is the previous situation uh, surrounded by Japanese American resident uh, houses. The, these areas were uh, became the wide street. This is the land use mitigation strategy. The, of course, we can use structure and land use mitigation. But as you know, to do this, we need a uh, lot of money or time and agreement. Then it's sometimes it is uh, very difficult to realize this strategy. Then another strategy is preparedness. Without this physical change, they can prepare for evacuation. This is preparedness or software uh, disaster risk reduction strategy. The preparedness activities taken to help save lives and minimize damage by preparing people to respond appropriately when an emergency is imminent. Preparedness includes planning to respond when an emergency or disaster occurs and working to increase available to respond effectively. effectively. This preparedness strategy is deeply related to response. The activities occurring, occurring during or immediately following a disaster designed to provide 
emergency assistance to the victims of the event, reduce the likelihood of a secondary damage and to expedi expedite recovery operations. Uh, this is response. You can easily image what happened. For this strategy, uh, for example, uh, one example is uh, to make the hazard map or evacuation map for the people. Then they can know what they should do after the disaster. Then this is tsunami evacuation tower uh, located in Kochi prefecture. We can see many kinds of, many types of evacuation tower or evacuation, tsunami evacuation buildings along the coast. This is physical environment for the response. Then we go to recovery. Then uh, probably Professor Imamura talked about this and uh, Professor Onoda will introduce his works today. Then I don't say many things, but the World Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction adopted the Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction. One of the important concepts for us is build back better. Then using this concept, uh, nowadays we can see, we can see a uh, lot of examples of build back better after the 2011 tsunami, including tsunami evacuation tower in Sendai and so on. Then anyway, uh, I feel some relationship between architecture and urban design and disaster management like this. So the, for example, in response phase, uh, we can prepare the evacuation place, small parks, and in the after response phase, the temporary houses or permanent houses, uh, some uh, elements for design. And to prepare for future disasters, uh, the development, uh, there are some de urban development or architecture construction here. This is a relationship in general topic. Then I heard that uh, your studio uh, deal with the fire. Then I will introduce history of great fire and urban development in Japan today. The fire. The, to think of fire, uh, the disaster risk reduction strategy, uh, we need to know this mechanism. Uh, this is conditions of burning. Uh, when the fire occurs, there are three elements. At first, burnable. The burnable consists of three types. At first, gas, city gas, propane gas, and so on, and liquid, gasoline, or kerosene, and solid is paper or wood. These are burnable. The another, the second thing is oxygen to support burning. The third one is heat, flame, electric or static spark. Then to prevent fire spread, uh, what you can do is to remove one of the three. The, for example, you can do remove burnable things. Then this is the example of Japanese history. The, they used to destruction firefighting before, 
to distract some vulnerable things, they could distinguish the fire. The second one is uh, the heat. You can cool down the heat using water or other uh, material. The third one is uh, to choke or dilute oxygen. Uh, it is easy to understand using this example. After barbecue, you can close the lid. This is because of the reason. Then about Japanese traditional house. Our Japanese traditional houses are made of wood or paper, very burning, vulnerable materials. Then we Japanese had had lots of great fires in the history. Uh, this is timeline of uh, critical disastrous events in Japan uh, from great fires in old Tokyo to Kobe earthquake. The most of them are about great fire. Then let me introduce some examples. In 1657, made a great fire occurred in old Tokyo. After this fire, the Edo shogunate uh, developed public, public open spaces in Edo areas. Uh, this is Ryogoku, Ryogoku open space. And uh, these open space were prepared for future fire uh, to prevent future fire spread. And also this uh, public open space became very popular areas in Tokyo. Then after Meireki fire, town fire fighter system commenced. This became uh, nowadays the local community firefighter system in Japan. Then how to prevent fire spread? Uh, we could we can see uh, we can see the strategy in the architecture vocabulary. This walls was constructed to prevent fire spread. Uh, this is a very famous example in Waki city in Tokushima prefecture. Uh, we call it Udatsu. In 1872, Great Ginza fire was occurred in Tokyo. In, 19, in 1960, 1666, the Great Fire of London occurred. Then Japanese government uh, imported the strategy to construct construct houses by only block brick. Then Ginza Brick Street was opened. Unfortunately, because of another disaster or air raid in 1945, most of them were destruct, destroyed. But uh, we can see some remains in Ginza area. Uh, this is another example. In 1893, Great Fire was a great fire occurred in Kawagoe city in Saitama prefecture, north of Tokyo. The, after this great fire, they replaced old wooden material houses with warehouses with a tiled roof and thick earth wall to prevent more fire. 
1923, the very uh, great, uh, great Canto earthquake happened. Uh, this changed Tokyo too much. Uh, today, I don't talk about this, but uh, after uh, learning from this great fire, the Tokyo Metropolitan Government uh, prepared lots of designated evacuation site in Tokyo. Uh, in 2018, the number of the park became more than 2213. Uh, let me introduce Hakone, a Hakodate in north of uh, Hokkaido Prefecture. In 1934, the March 21st, one big, one great fire occurred here because of the geographical situation. Uh, they used to have very strong wind always. Then in 1934, the great, uh, great fire occurred. After this fire, they, the town was changed like this. Uh, this green belt, uh, they prepared green belt network like this. Uh, this is for uh, to prevent fi uh, great uh, fire spreading. Then we can see lots of wide streets like this and this. And in the network, they constructed the city hall. Uh, this is the end of the network before a uh, river. Then here with temple, they constructed the disaster monument like this. In 1976, uh, we may say this was the final great fire in Japan, Sakata fire. Learning from this fire, uh, National Research Institute of Fire and Disaster uh, conducted survey. Then they found that public space was uh, functioned, functioned to prevent fire spreading. Based on this research, they finally found out that the more than 45 meters street uh, useful for the urban design. Uh, and uh, this is another big Develop, uh, development in Tokyo. Here is a Koto Delta District. Uh, it was told that very, very vulnerable areas in Tokyo. And, uh, because of the congested uh, district with wooden, old wooden houses and so on. Then Takayama Laboratory of the University of Tokyo proposed one urban, uh, this urban cruciform project to prevent future fire spreading. This strategy was changed to the right figure. The finally, the one idea was realized like this. 
this concept was to to set disaster prevention base in this area uh, surrounded by uh, high rise apartment buildings and uh, inside was the hosp hospitals schools or parks uh, which are very necessary or useful after disasters in this district. Then they prepared this water chamber or water gun and so on. Then uh, this is a shutter to stop fire spreading. Uh, this was very rare case in Japan or maybe in other countries, but a very remarkable example to think of fire prevention strategy in the cities. The other result, uh, I introduced some cases for learning from the past disasters in Japan. As a result, the number of death toll became lower than before, uh, except the Kobe earthquake or 2011 Great East Japan earthquake. Uh, I introduced how to think of urban disaster and uh, uh, some cases to reduce fire spreading in Japan. Thank you very much.